All righty, Tal Short, how you doing tonight, sir? What's up, gentlemen? What's going on? Not much, not much. Thank you for coming on. Uh, much appreciative. I know in this COVID time, things can be a little bit crazy and scheduling. I know you're probably working from home some, being busy with Reebok. So we're much appreciative of your, your time and actually coming onto the show and let us, our listeners hear what you got to say. And um, Taylor, you want to say what's up? I just kind of forgot about you. My bad. What up? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you, guys. It's an honor to be on for sure. Sure. Um, I'm a big fan of you guys and uh, appreciate what you do. We appreciate really that, appreciate man. that. Um, we really do. So as we usually do, we're going to hit you with our um, questions of terror. So Taylor's going to hit you with a little icebreaker first. All right. So my first icebreaker t- question of terror is, what is your favorite thing that you have bought so far this year? Oh. Whoa. And you're not allowed to say the Nano. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Love you that. didn't buy that. <laughs> well, that one I didn't have to buy. Um, I would say I just ordered a new study Bible, so I don't have it yet. Oh, nice. I, I've been reading the same Bible since when I had my big transformation probably you know, five years ago. So I've been reading the same Bible. It's beat up, which I'm kind of proud of. Yep. But like, I, I want to dive a little bit deeper. So I was like, all right, I'm going to grab a study Bible. So. I'm excited to get into that one, um, just to, to learn a little bit more deeper into to God's word. So, I, I would love say that. that's awesome. That's awesome. I actually just had this conversation with Amber, like, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. Like, she asked if I wanted a new Bible because I I've, I've had the same Bible since I was in like high school. Like, it is, it is well worn, um, which is cool. Like, that's again, like similar to what you said. Like, that's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. Is you have a well worn Bible. Like, I think that's a. I don't know. It's a sign that we're trying to do it right. So I like that. Um, that's awesome. Cool answer. So my, my question would, would be to you, um, Tal, if you could pick another career besides what you're in now, what would it be and why? Uh, definitely coaching. Um, so mm-hmm. right now, like I work on, um, you know, footwear and product. Um, definitely still involved in sports, but I was an athlete growing up. I always thought I was going to just play professional sports. That was my whole, like, didn't think there was anything else. Um, but coaching is one thing that I really wish. And maybe, um, I have a three-year-old son, so maybe I'll like start coaching him. I don't know yet whether I do that or not. Um, that's not really, I'd rather coach other kids than my own. Um, so yeah. coaching is one thing just based, I love leading people. I love like groups. I love, that's what I loved about sports was like that just cohesiveness. I mean, the brotherhood, I guess we can add that in there. Just yeah. like, there's something about coaching that I've always had. Like, a, I, even my parents are like, Oh, I would thought you were going to be a coach just by, you know, you love sports, you know a lot, but um, just here I am now designing shoes, so it's fun. Right. I love it. And you're you're a senior uh, product manager, correct? So obviously that takes leadership traits. So coaching requires that as well. So you're probably, um, many people and many people aren't, depends on how you you know are created, but you're blessed probably with leadership traits and that is what would make you such a great coach. You know, and that's I, I love that coaching is is ad, admirable to everyone because I sit on the sidelines and watch my all my son's coaches and all. And I just like, yep, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay over here. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so, yeah. So, Tao, if you could let our listeners know a little bit about your background and your testimony and where you're coming from and, and all things like that. Yeah, man. So I, I have a pretty, I guess, unique and very common kind of. Um, testimony. So I grew up um, in Indiana, like going to a United Methodist church. Like my parents were definitely, you know, we are into church. We'd go every Sunday, but I never got anything out of it. Like I wasn't in any of the youth groups. Um, I played sports and I played a lot of sports, which was cool, but like I had no time for anything outside of sports. And so um, my parents kind of just let me do my thing. They were great. I mean, we, we didn't really talk much about God or anything. So I, we were there, right? I was, I would say what, um, some people call it just a lukewarm Christian growing up. Sure, so sure. believed in God, didn't, you know, thought I was going to heaven cause I was a good person. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, I got out of college, or, sorry, when I got into high school, um, I was pretty high level athlete. Um, and then I had a, a pretty tragic accident happen my senior year of uh, basketball uh, we actually had a player die on the court. He like collapsed like next to me. Um, and he was like a seven foot center going to Kentucky. Like, so it was pretty big national news and it was, I'm pretty old, so it was a while ago, but it was kind of before any of these real like heart attacks on the court, which are now unfortunately a little bit more prevalent. 
So they didn't have anything there to revive him. And so he actually passed away on the court, 8,000 people in the gym. So it was one of those things like he was, he was part, you know, he was, I just set me off in a, in a bad spot. Right. So I, I had to deal with that. I've never even been to a funeral. I'm up there like giving the eulogy part of the eulogy. So it's just, it was a lot for an 18 year old kid. And I don't think I was prepared for it. And I was in that mindset where I was trying to help everyone else and I didn't really take care of myself. So that led me to, you know, I played some sports, um, in college or whatever, but I got into like drinking. Right. So I was partying after kind of that, that whole tragic accident. I was like, you know what, I'm going to live life to the fullest. It was like that typical, like, Oh, you know, ever live every day like your last. And so I just started partying hmm. just a whole lot of sin just came in. Um, and it really wasn't, I was became an alcoholic for about 10 years. Um, so, um, I was one of those closet functioning alcoholics. So the really scary ones that only a few people kind of knew, um, but I could always, I was always the first one, the party, last one to leave, like drinking all the time. Um, and unfortunately I never got into beer. So it was always hard liquor and it was just a dangerous state. So, um, got married. Um, my wife, I think married me thinking she was going to change me. And that's obviously not a good idea, but she was actually the one who probably led us, led me the most to, to Christ. And I think, um, you know, I think you guys have talked about it before, but like, you know, those stronger women, sometimes they're so, they're so important in our lives. Like I, I would not be sitting here right now if it wasn't for my wife. So she's, she owes a lot of the credit, but, um, so I, I found, you know, it was one day, um, it was almost five years ago. Now I was just fed up and it was a Wednesday night in the middle of the summer. And I was just like, I'm done. Like I need help God. And he answered it immediately, like immediately. So it's one of those things I think a lot of people were praying for me. And so it was like, almost like God was like waiting for me to say that prayer. And then it just like happened. Hmm. I never went to rehab. I never went to anything. I never, and then five years later, I still haven't had a sip of alcohol. So it just, it's one of those, I know that doesn't happen for everyone, but like there was an answered prayer, like on the spot. Um, and I didn't really believe it right away. So it took time. Obviously I was like, wait, I'm going to get to the desire back. You know, the, the sin's going to win again and just, and it hasn't, and it's not going to. So um, changed my whole life, uh, for sure. Um, now I'm a small group leader at my church, like heavily involved and just love it. And, um, I got baptized last year. So it was one of those love things it. I, you know, I was baptized as a child, the sprinkle on the head, our church is a little bit different, like, Hey, full submersion, um, which I thought was great. Um, and now like I baptized a guy like two weeks ago during the COVID thing, but it was like, you know what, if I get COVID from give, baptizing a guy, then so be it. So, um, just it's been, yeah, it's been been incredible. I've been pretty much on fire with the Holy Spirit for about you know a couple of years now, just trying to learn as much as I can and and really just spread the gospel as much as possible. I love that. I mean, that was um, when I like when we reached out to you and asked if you wanted to come on. Your response was whatever's going to help spread the gospel, and like I so like that's I love that so much. So that's awesome. Heck yeah! And um, you mentioned your wife, and you also mentioned earlier that you're a father. So um, how old is your son? You said three. Yeah, he's three, almost four. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Now, um, where are you guys currently living now? Where are you guys at? Yeah. So we live right outside. We live outside of Boston. So I live in Foxborough. So where the Patriots play, like literally is in my backyard. So, okay. Sorry to hear yeah. that. <laughs> um, I'm a tired Colts fan. So it's pretty much, I'm married to a Pats fan. So we are a very much a house divided. Uh, <laughs> They've actually done like stories on us before in the news because like it's like one of those it's just people love like this whole like rivalry thing. So yeah, yeah, that's funny. funny. I love that. That's awesome. So um, going into like what you do now and like how I guess like one of the things that I like ha admired about you from like just finding you on social media is like how outspoken you are about like your faith and how oh, yeah. like on fire you are about like the Holy Spirit and you share all that and um. And I think it's awesome, especially because like I can relate, like I work in this, like we work in the same field. And so like, I'm sure like even just like simple things, like people follow you on Instagram that you work with and, but you're still like bold enough to, you know what I mean? Like just still share the gospel and not care at all. Um, so how, like, was that like a shift five years ago? I mean, obviously like, but like what, what does that like look like in your everyday life? Again, like, cause I'm only looking at it from the, the scope of, of what Instagram is, but what does that look like in your everyday life? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I, I definitely, um, 
am not afraid. And I, I believe a lot of it comes through the Holy Spirit, just being very bold. Um, I mean, I think it's our job as Christians to, you know, share the gospel. But I found a platform where, you know, people downplay social media like, oh, it's so bad. But, you know, I only have like 5,000 followers, not a lot. But what it is, is I've got a bunch of people that actually, you know, they they came to my, they found me looking for shoes and then I give them the gospel. And yep. Now I'm kind of taking pride in it where like it's one of those things that I put up something every day in the morning, hoping, knowing that some people that's the only God, anything God that they're going to hear all day. But I know they're probably looking for me to like accidentally share a shoe that's not launched yet or something like I'm wearing. So I do that on purpose to kind of I know because I can see who sees it. Like there's a lot of people that see it every day and I get excited for that just I do get a lot of comments from people like, hey, I really appreciate you, you know, really speaking out. And it's definitely a risk because I mean, we, we work for big companies. So like there's definitely I'm sure we'll probably talk more about it. But I, I, I really settled into this whole involving my faith into work. And it's just how I do everything, like how we how I treat people at work, how I do meetings, how I lead people like everyone knows I'm a Christian. And everyone knows I'm pretty outspoken. Like my our like my big bosses, like come to me a lot and like jokingly say, Hey, you're the spiritual guru. Like, can you help us out here? Like, can you pray for us? Like, and I'm always like, Hey, I pray for you guys. You're, you're my leaders. I got to pray for our leaders. And so they think I'm joking, but I literally, we like my wife and I pray in the car before we go into work. So hmm. she actually works, she works with me at Reebok. So okay. nice to have another person there that really, sure. you know, sure. you can lean on. Um, and we've actually found other Christians at work based on some of the, my comments, like people know that. And so they'll come over and be like, Hey, I didn't know you guys were believers. And so it, we do have a little bit of a smaller fellowship at work, but it's one of those things that, you know, it's a little bit tough to like, we can't meet at work or anything, but we definitely chat. And it's always nice to have fellow Christians around you, um, especially with what we do. There's just not a ton out there right now. And I think we just, I think we're always, people are always watching like us mm -hmm. and how we act in every aspect of life. So I try to be consistent. I try to be authentic. I think that's important. Right. So it, that actually brings up a great point. So we, um, we've we interviewed some people in the past and we've talked about our identities in Christ and not getting them confused and intertwined too much with how we view and what we do for a living. So mm -hmm. how does it look like on your end? Like, what have you done and how have you managed to keep your identity in Christ at the forefront versus getting intertwined with Reebok, something that's so important to your family, especially since you said your wife works there as well? Yeah. How have you managed to keep those two separate in Christ um, ahead? Yeah, so when I when I really caught fire and, and started thinking about this whole faith and work, I, I really got interested in the topic. So I, I did a lot of studies. So I did um, Tim Keller wrote a great like um, I think it was called uh, Every Every Good Endeavor is the name of the book, I believe. Yeah. Right. So it was just an amazing book on like how faith like can shape your work. And I just remember like reading. I think I read it twice. It was just talking about like you, your Christian faith gives you an identity. And like without work, it'll sink you. So it's like, I don't want to like, oh, he was a product manager. Like when I pass away, like I want to have people say he was a Christian, right? Like I don't want my, I, my work identity to identify who I am, which is what I think we all believe in. So like, I think priorities too, just making sure that always my priority is, you know, God, family, and then work. Yes, we are, we are as Christians, it might not be on the top of our list as far as priorities go, but we are, you know. And the Bible says we need to work hard. Look, we're going to work hard. Like I want fellow Christians around me. I want people to have balance, you know, that have a family that take time off that, you know what I mean? Like that's the people I want going to battle with, especially at work. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of how I see it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, I had a point. Oh, I, I got it. <laughs> I remembered. Um, that was, um, you said that you want people to know that you are a Christian. That's how you get remembered like that. This is not a question. This is just a point off of that. Um, the one of our my friends who his dad's was part of the covenant group. I've mentioned it many times. I mentioned it last week. Um, he when he passed away, uh, one of the things that like sticks with me the absolute most is when he passed away at his funeral. Um, that a bunch of people came up and talked about him. Right, he was a fireman. Like he was a volunteer fireman. He was. I don't even know what he did for a living. And so they talked about him as a firefighter. They talked about him as like an, an elder at the church, a father, a husband, and all those things, and like a believer. And never once did it get mentioned like what he did for a living. Like never awesome. once. And it was like that to me was like 
the greatest compliment like that I'm like shooting for in my entire life. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I, I relate so much to what you said and love that. Um, and it's a tough, it's a tough balance. Like it's certainly not something that just like comes easy, but, um, I love, I love that like mindset and that focus. And that's if we can all strive to have that, that's the goal. Yeah. And I don't think it's like what I don't want it to sound like, like I don't want to be successful. Like I absolutely want to be the president of the Good company. Yep. I think yeah. it's got to like I want to be there so I can glorify God in a bigger way, right? So I can make better decisions, better godly decisions. So like I have my my people that I work for know I have aspirations to be as high mm-hmm. as possible. Like it's not like I'm just settled in. Like all right, I'm cool, I'm good. Like I think as Christians, we've got to grow. We need more, especially business leaders. Like I'm, yeah, it'd be cool to go to seminary and do all that, but that's not me. Like we need more people out battling where we need. You know, what I mean, we have yeah. some amazing pastors, especially here in America, like tons of them. So it's like, we need people in business really changing this, um, changing this world when it comes to Christ. Absolutely. A, and, I, and I think word. sometimes um, we fail and a lot of people overlook it that we still need to have personal goals in life because obviously our personal goals are being driven by God. So, so too many times people get in that awkward phase where, oh, well, you're a Christian. Your only goal should be uh, you know, what God has in store for you. And I get that to an extent, mm-hmm. but also who do you think is driving your personal goals it mm-hmm. is him. So you having that goal of being the top of Reebok is, is, is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. And sometimes we confuse them and that line gets a little blurred. Um, it's, it's not anybody working against each other. It's not me working against God or God working against me. It's right. us working together. Um, and he's working for us and already has worked for us. So, um, I, I love that. And I, I, my next question would be, have you been approached any at work since you have started being more vocal on Instagram about your faith and what you believe in? My question. Yeah, I, mean, I, <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's, um, it's a good question. I, I wouldn't say like, it's been not so much at work, like face to face, but a lot of like people, you know, if I'm on a work trip or something like out of the office, I, I get a little more questions. Um, they, you know, like when they're like, Hey, are, are we going out? Like after a dinner, like a work dinner, right. They'll notice that I'm not drinking. Right. Like, um, as you know, we spend some time over in the far East. Like I have to go to Vietnam yep. three or four times a year. So it's like over there, it's, you know, it's normal for like celebrations and everyone's cheering, you know, like taking shots. And it's just like, I'm sitting there. Um, so it's one of those things. And like, I, I get to share my, my gospel too, because people are like, Oh, why don't you drink? And then I kind of just give them the full story. So it's always like a nice (laughs) angle, but yeah, at work it's, you know, I really, I just make sure how I act. Like I don't just scream I'm a Christian and like, but I, I, everyone kind of knows it and my wife's the same way. And we just, you know, we just try to always be consistent with who we are, no matter who's looking at us and no matter where we are. I love that. That's, I mean, and like, obviously, like you said, I, I understand that. Like I've been, I've been at that table, like where that, ha- like, I understand exactly what you're talking about. Um, and that's certainly not an easy thing to do. And so I, you know, commend you for it. And that's, and that's awesome. I love it. Um, I think also like kind of like switching gears a little bit. Um, well, yeah, switching gears a little bit. Um, you obviously like working like with Reebok and the nano and like the kind of like CrossFit genre. And mm-hmm. that is like, we've interviewed some people who do, who are like competed in the games and stuff like that. Don't know why I couldn't get that out. Um, and like that CrossFit's a huge like community of like where brotherhood and that is a big part of that. So do you want to like at least just tell a little bit about like what that part of your life looks like and like even, even just fitness or just what like going through goals and stuff like that, um, with a community looks like. Yeah. I think that's why CrossFit got so popular is the brotherhood. And so it's, whole sense of community right so you're you're suffering with other people right we're doing these really terrible workouts together um and then afterwards yeah you're trying to maybe beat the person next to you but at the end of the you know after the end of the workout you're helping them up off the ground or they're helping you up and it's just there's just something amazing that that beautiful chemistry after a workout when you've sweated with all these people and everyone gave it their all and it's just there's something really cool about that because i mean that's part of it with brotherhood right it's just you're you're there together you're sharing in this. Um, and what's cool about CrossFit is there's a ton of just very, you know, bold and outspoken Christians. I mean, I think you're, you were led by Rich Froning, who's the, you know, the Michael Jordan of CrossFit. Um, he's, I can call him a friend cause he is, and we spent, we've had many conversations about Jesus. And, um, so it's really cool. Like that, 
so he's kind of a he's way up there and you know he's got the galatians tattoo like he he made sure like when i when i design him a shoe he's always got to have galatians 614 on the outside of his shoe so it's like that's a fun thing for me to deal with at work like because i understand what that means to him so it's like that's why I think I think Rich and there's there's a lot of them out there, um, some really great like top level athletes that people follow and and they see how they live and it's so I think that's just kind of um, weaved in there. There's you know there's lots of different faith communities within CrossFit like Faith RX like some really strong so it's really cool. So I think that's why it makes sense to me why Christians are are kind of um, they they go to CrossFit because it's that brotherhood right they they lean on each other for support. Um, and you're not just trying to do it alone. And I think that's, you know, what you guys do every day for, with the brother. So. Absolutely. What, what is the, uh, you said the faith RX. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's an online com- or it's a community. I don't know enough about it and I, I should, but, um, it's, it's one, there's chapters all over and it's like the, at CrossFit boxes, I think they do like a Bible study. I'm not hundred percent sure, but if anyone's all interested, right. I'm probably look at, look up, um, faith RX cause it's, um, it's something really cool that they have going on out there. Okay. Awesome. And you, I think, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and, and for CrossFit, you are one of the, for Reebok, because I, I see the Reebok shoes all around, that the, they're the CrossFit, like that is the shoe for CrossFit. Um, that's what you are in charge of yeah. as the senior product manager for overseeing all that? Yep. So for like the last uh, about five years, I've I've kind of managed the Nano franchise, so it is our CrossFit. So the Nano is our CrossFit shoe, right? And so we we're the exclusive supplier to CrossFit um, through the end of this year. So um, yeah, we've been with them for ten years. Um, we kind of started with CrossFit when there was nobody really doing it. Um, we got we kind of caught lightning in a bottle. We we mm. we grew and they grew about together. Like we just kind of grew the sport together, and now you know we're handing out. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars to the winner of the CrossFit Games. You know what I mean? Like, and right. they used to get, uh, I think, a hundred dollars and like a box of protein, and that was it. Like now they're wow. getting. So it's just it's funny looking back and seeing like how the sports evolved. But um, yeah, so it's been an honor. I was a CrossFitter before I actually took over the Nano. So I take a lot of pride in what I do because it's like I'm surrounded by these people, and and that's why I, there are a few followers on Instagram that. Oh, you know, they, we have a bunch of just like nano nerds, as I like to call them. They just love, they're like, it's, there's like the shoe culture within CrossFit. It's really cool. Um, and no one's like loyal to one brand. I mean, we have competitors out there and and you'll go in a, a box and you'll see three different brands of shoes in one little cubby. And it's just like, yeah, they support everyone. So it's, um, the, the good thing for all of us is they spend a lot of money. So that, yeah. helps, that helps me keep employed. Well, so. the good thing for you is, like I said, the when I think of a CrossFit shoe, Reebok is the first one that comes to mind because I those are the only ones that are pop in my mind when I think of CrossFitting. Because I I have a guy I'm a firefighter for my career, and uh, one of the guys on my shift owns a CrossFit gym, CrossFit Baltimore, and uh, he's a CrossFit guy, and obviously because he owns a gym. But I I see CrossFit things and see Reebok. So fortunate for you, like you know. You're yeah, in Maryland. Did, I think of that. Yeah, we spent a, we spent a lot of money to get that message across. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's a that's enough Reebok talk for me. So we're uh, oh yeah, under armor here. <laughs> Easy on it. No, I uh, no, I love it. And there is like there's, I mean, like again, like not to keep like having a like a shoe go to ten franchises is super impressive. And like there's a lot that I could talk to you about with that, but that's not appropriate for this platform. So um, we'll move on. But um, yeah, I love it. So I guess I don't. I really want to. I want to ask. Yeah, no, I have one. Um, I've been saving it. To I just to wanted s- to stop Reebok talk. That's all. Oh, I, didn't, yeah. I, I just had to interrupt, like, just to say this is this is getting under my skin a little. <laughs> We're all one family. On. <laughs> no, you're right. You'd see when I wear I'm Nikes just, into his I'm house. Just I'm um, just playing. I'm just playing. I've been I've been holding this to find a, a way to segue into it. But I'm just going to ask it. So you talked about the loss of your best friend um, in high school and that team. So. What were the aspects of brotherhood in that? I know we talked about how you were up there giving the eulogy and how tough that was, but how did you guys all as a team and as a school come together within that brotherhood and really deal with it um, through such a a young time in your life? Like you're still forming yourself as a man at that point, and you were hit with something that many people you know, aren't. So how, how did that look? Yeah, it was an amazing experience. I went to a pretty big high school too. So it was, it was national news, like when this happened and it just, I remember even that night we went back home, we drove, we were, it was a playoff game. So we were driving back home and our gym was completely full when we got there people just wanting to support us. So mm-hmm. I think what my biggest issue was, I wasn't, 
mature enough to realize I needed help and that I needed to ask for help, right? So people were willing to help. I just didn't, I was too busy saying, I'm okay. I'll take care of everyone else. That's kind of something that I'm always going to do. That's my personality is I just want to make sure everyone else is good. And then forgot to take care of myself and paid the price for it. But it wasn't like there were so many others that like use that brotherhood and that community because our community, we just actually celebrated the 20th anniversary of that, that, that night, like in March. So like mm. just seeing everyone again on Facebook, like remembering all the stories and talking about it. And it's not just the players, the fans, like we went to, a, a, it was Indiana high school basketball. So it's like, sure. it was like, the, it was like Hoosier, like literally the gym was full. Like it was everything you imagine and like to have something like that. Um, but the community just rallied together. Um, at a time, you know, people were always there for me. I just didn't take advantage of it. So, right now, something you, I, yeah, I really wish I would have, because I think my life could have taken a different direction. Right now, you said the 20th anniversary. So, are there, do you still keep in contact with the other guys and players from your team and all? A little bit. I'm pretty much the only one that really moved far away. Right. Like I think, um, you know, I grew up in Indiana. Now I'm in Boston. So. Right. Um, I, I, you know, occasional texts, but, um, I was super close with them for a long time. Um, so yeah, we still somewhat, we're just all in different stages of life right now. Gotcha. Man, that's awesome. Um, that really, I mean, it's, I saw the picture on your Instagram, I guess, of your guys' team. You made yeah. a post, uh, uh, probably, I guess, around that time when you, in, in March, um, of yeah. your guys' team photo of how the amazing things you guys accomplished within that season. Um, and how tragic it was to lose your teammates. So it's 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 just in my head as well because I was looking at it earlier hmm. um, about that. So, Tall, what uh, as we start to wrap up here, what what could you say for brotherhood from your eyes, your aspects, um, what you've seen throughout your career, through be- your sports and coaching, what future coaching, obviously maybe for your son, as you said, um, what could be your advice for our listeners about brotherhood? And how to go about that in a daily life? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely up there as one of the most important things that you know that you need in your life is other you know other fellow believers around you, surrounded by you. Um, I mean, you guys just dealt with something you know very tragic, and you, you guys have been there for each other, and you guys are living that brotherhood out like mm-hmm. every you know that was just one situation. I think we all we all have to, we can't take it for granted, I think is, is one thing that I want to make sure that I get across is that we just, we're, we're so lucky to have our fellow believers. We need to lean on them, right? Especially not only on the, the bad times, but in the good times too, the reminder, like, Hey, you still need to praise God. You, you know, like don't just pray when things are bad, like make sure that you're, you know, you're praising them in the good times as well. So it's, it's one thing that I think that I know from a, a personal standpoint is that I can never take for granted all the people that I have around me, especially, you know, within your church. Like I have some amazing men in my church, some, some people that I really look up to, um, and just take advantage of that. Um, I don't try to, don't try to do everything yourself. Right. Like, I think that's the one thing that, you know, as a Christian, I've learned most is lean on people, especially God, right. To, to yeah. make, yeah. to make things happen, like just lean on them. You can't do it yourself. Um, which is a good thing because we'd mess it up, right? Hmm. That's, a good, that's a good word right I, there. I love, how, preach. I love how you said that don't forget to remind each other to pray even in the good times because so many times we forget about that, I feel like. It's always you're going through a rough time, we'll sit here, we'll pray together. But hmm. what about the other times, like you said, when things are going well, like to praise him and thank him and, and pray to him, you know, how, how fortunate and blessed we all are yeah. um, in this world. That's like... That's like uh, I don't know. So like you always hear like people talk about like, like our Christian walk, like there's peaks and there's valleys and there's peaks and there's valleys. And I think that, I don't know, like I think, and we always feel like we're, I don't know, like, I, and whatever. I think that, I think that if we, I think if, and I'm not going to say that this is like a peanut butter, you can put this over every situation. But I think that like that right there, like if we were to like stay as close to God during the good times, and like praise him when things are going great. Like I feel like that would make those valleys where it feels like we're low, we're farther away from him, like a lot shorter or a lot shallower, right? You know what I mean? Like I feel like cuz it's easy to like like you just said like trauma. Like I I mean I literally the words I said last week where I haven't been this close to God in a long time is because life had been pretty easy 
And so I had started to like, you know, things get a little more casual and you, your prayer life falls in and out and, you know, things like that. And it takes something traumatic and, or jarring to like shock you back. So it's like, man, I don't, and I'm just, I'm literally just, I'm not, I'm not preaching. I'm talking, I'm thinking out loud here. Like that's, right. that's something that like I need to do in my own life better is, is praise more in the good times and let, you know what I mean? Like, that's one thing that I don't know. Yeah. And I think one thing that I do daily that helps me just kind of start off is I always wake up about a half hour earlier than anyone else. And I just get in the word, Mm -hmm. right. And just, just grab my Bible and, and, you know, it's the first thing I do when I wake up, I don't look at Instagram. I don't look at my work email. It's like, just grab my book, grab some coffee and spend some time in the word. And it has dramatically changed my life. So I just, that's one thing like, you know, and it's a lot of it is like I'm reading, you know, the New Testament and there's a lot of positive stories. And it's like, you know, I just right then when I'm reading, I'm like, I got to stop and pray and just thank mm-hmm. God for what's going on right now. Because like you can get super complacent, right? Like if everything's going good and you're just like, all right, well, I'm, you know, I forget to pray. It's OK. Everything's good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so easy just to drop your knees when there's something bad happen. But I think as Christians, like you said, I think how we move this forward is we got to we got to praise them too. Like think yeah. about yeah. our own self. Like we don't like hearing criticism all the time. Like we, we want some positive, you know, reinforcement. So yeah. I think God deserves that. Right. I mean, everything he does in our lives. So it's a good word. Yeah. I love it. Heck yeah. Tal. Well, hey man, we really appreciate you coming on to the show. Yeah. Um, it's, like I said at the beginning, I know times are tough right now and you know, especially with us having the kids at home and we're trying to work from home partially and be away from home. Like, there's just a lot going on. And you giving us your time and um, talking to us about the word is always, a, you know, a good time. So thanks again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Best meeting I've had all week, guys. This is a good one. This Heck is- yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought you were about to say the best meeting I've had all day. I was like, man, all right. <laughs> All week. week. Oh, it's week, Thursday, brother. too. That's yeah. <laughs> Is it? I didn't even know. Oh. No, you're right. It you're all right. blends together during COVID because you don't, no, you know. Oh. All right, Tal. Awesome. Appreciate right. it, man. Well, Thanks thank a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes, sir.